Hello there! In this video we're going to continue our exploration of abstract algebra and begin our discussion of algebraic structures. In case you are already not familiar with binary operations, feel free to check out that video before exploring this one. The two algebraic structures that we will discuss in this video are magmas and finally semigroups. Throughout our discussion, we're going to give two examples for you to measure your understanding. Feel free to drop your answers in the comment and discussion section below. Let's get started. Alright, so assuming that we know what a binary operation is, we're going to begin our discussion of algebraic structures, and in particular magmas. So let's just quickly define uh, what a magma is. So we're going to be letting S, uh, and we're going to assume that that set S is not empty. So let S be a non-empty set. I mean, that pretty much does the same exact thing. And let star be a binary operation uh, that maps the Cartesian product of S with itself to S. So the structure and we're going to call it M, defined to be equal to the ordered pair S with this binary operation star, uh, is said to be a magma if S is closed under this binary operation star. And we talked before what it means to be closed uh, in the previous video, so if you take any uh, pairs from the set S, and you take the binary operation between them, the result should also uh, be within the set S. Okay, so a couple things to talk about here. So a uh, word here is structure. Uh, some people call it an algebraic structure, uh, which is why this uh, series is called uh, abstract algebra. So this algebraic structure is an ordered pair, um, so it's a little world, uh, where you have the set S and a binary operation uh, that is defined uh, on this particular set S. And we call this, this structure a magma if this set here S is closed under this binary operation star. Right? So if S is closed under star, then M we call a magma. In general, it's an algebraic structure, but this algebraic structure, more in particular, is called a magma. So let's consider a couple examples to sort of get an idea of what's going on here. So we're going to consider uh, this, the structure M, which is going to be defined to be equal to the pair N, or the set of natural numbers, with this binary operation star, where this binary operation star on the numbers X, Y, where X and Y are elements of the natural numbers, is defined to be equal to X minus Y. So keep in mind, X, Y are both natural numbers. So if n is closed under star, then we say that the structure m is a magma. So we first need to figure out, okay, well, is the set of natural numbers closed under this operation, which is just ordinary subtraction? So we can easily come up with a counterexample to show that this is not closed. For example, we can let x be equal to 3, and we can let y be equal to 7, and we clearly see that star xy, which is going to be equal to 3 minus 7, uh, so what exactly is um, 3 minus 7? Well, we know that this is the same as 3 minus, so what is 7 defined in terms of the natural numbers? Well, that's precisely just 3 plus 4, and we can use the distributive property here. So we have 3 minus 3 minus 4. So we know uh, that 3 and negative 3 are additive inverses of each other, so they cancel and just gives us 0. And we have 0 minus 4. Uh, but this operation is not defined in the set of natural numbers, right? So whatever this is, is not in the set of natural numbers. So what can we conclude? Therefore, since uh, n is not closed under star, then we can say that m is not a magma. Right? So that's the basic idea of what we're looking at here. So let's look at a, another example. Let's work with a little table this time. 
um, so we can see all the possible combinations. So example two. So we're going to consider the structure n, which I'm going to define to be equal to the order pair uh, s with star, where s is the set of numbers 0, 1, 2, and star is the operation. Uh, so let's define star x, y uh, to be equal to x plus y modulo 3. So if you're not familiar with modulo arithmetic, uh, it's similar to uh, clock arithmetic. Um, so in modulo 3, we only have the numbers 0, 1, and 2. So we have 0, uh, 1, and we have 2. So we know that 0 plus 1 is going to be 1. So 0 plus 1 is equal to 1. Uh, 1 plus 1 is going to be equal to 2. And then uh, 2 plus 1 is usually equal to 3. Uh, but in this world, we say that that's equivalent to 0, right? So usually um, that would be 12 o'clock uh, on a normal clock, and 12 is equivalent to 0 uh, in base 12 arithmetic, okay? So that's pretty much the general idea of what we're going on here. Uh, so if we build this multiplication table for modular 3 arithmetic, so we have 0, 1, 2, 0, 1, 2. So let's draw a little table. So 0 plus 0 is going to be 0, 0 plus 1 is 1, 0 plus 2 is 2, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 plus 1 is 2, and 1 plus 2 is equivalent to 0, 2 plus 0 is going to be 0, 2 plus 1 is going to be 0, and 2 plus 2 is going to be equal to uh, 1, right? Uh, no, that's not true. Why does it say 2 plus 0 is 0? That's not right. That should be 2, okay? So that is our multiplication table uh, for this particular uh, operation. So we clearly see uh, that since s is closed under star, we have that the structure n, which is equal to s star, is a magma. Okay. Now in some textbooks and some classes, you may see uh, this type of um, operation or set defined in another way. Uh, so you may see this written as Z subscript 3, uh, and some people will additionally write it as 0, 1, and 2. Okay, so one way to sort of think about this is uh, this is precisely all of Z, but Z is partitioned, partitioned, into these three into these three equivalence classes and what I mean by a partition um, all of the elements of Z are in one of these three sets and these three sets do not share uh, any common element so for example uh, I can look at uh, some uh, smaller examples so if we have, for example, 22, well, we know that 22 is the same as 7 times 3 plus 1. Um, so therefore, 22 is going to be equivalent uh, to 1. So you can sort of look at this from the division algorithm perspective. So that means 22 is going to belong to this uh, little equivalence class 1. Uh, if we look at a couple other examples, uh, for example, negative 7, Negative 7 we can write as negative 3 times 3 plus 2. Uh, that means negative 7 is going to belong to the equivalence class 2. Uh, and just another example to sort of illustrate, uh, if we have 354, um, we can write this as uh, 118 times 3 uh, plus 0. So therefore 354 is going to be an element of this equivalence class 0. So all elements of Z can be placed into one of these sets 0, 1, and 2. Okay, um, And the uh, operation that we usually perform on this set is what we call um, modulo or modular addition or multiplication or modular what have you. Um, and that can be sort of illustrated uh, as we've shown here with this little clock. Um, but you can easily generate a table uh, with all those results um, in it as well if you prefer that way. Let Zn be the extension of the previous example we just talked about, 
namely the set of equivalence classes 0, 1, 2, all the way down to m-1, where n is a natural number. To find the Brownian error operation star from Zn times Zn to Zn, be such that x times y is defined to be equal to x plus y modulo n, or modular addition. Is Zn star of magma? Justified. Alright, so what we have so far is an algebraic structure which is a pair of a set with a binary operation and we say that that uh, structure is a magma if that particular set is closed under that binary operation. So what we can do is we can give more properties or characteristics of that algebraic structure and that's going to have some special uh, characteristics as we'll see in the upcoming videos. So let us introduce the next character that uh, has been studied extensively. So let us consider uh, the algebraic structure M, which is going to be the pair S with star. So M is called a semigroup. A semigroup, some people hyphenate it, some people don't. Uh, if M is a magma, so S has to be closed under star, and star is an associative operator, so it's an associative operator on S. So pretty much what is a semigroup, so i.e. a semigroup is an associative magma. Okay. So in order for a algebraic structure to be a semigroup, uh, S has to be closed under star, and star has to be associative. And remember what associative means. So associative means that x star y star z uh, must be equal to x star y star z, with those parentheses uh, implying precedence in terms of their calculation. And this has to be true for all x, y, z in that set S for which we are considering. So let us look at a particular example. Let us consider the structure x defined to be equal to the pair s star. And let's define s to be equal to the set of all x that, can, that x can be represented in the form 2k, where k is an integer. So what is so special about this set? So it's definitely a subset of the integers, uh, but it moreover is the set of even integers. And let's define what our binary operation uh, will be. So let's define uh, star from s cross s into s uh, such that um, x star y is going to be defined to be equal to x squared plus y squared. So we're going to square our first even integer and then we're going to square our second even integer and then we're going to add those results. So the question uh, that we should be able to answer uh, is x a magma, and moreover, is x a semigroup? Okay. So let's first see if it is a magma, because if it's not a magma, then it can't be a semigroup. Okay. So we're going to let x uh, be equal to 2k1, uh, and we're going to let y be equal to 2k2. So k1 and k2 both are arbitrary integers. So let's do uh, the operation star between these two uh, particular values. So x star y is going to be equal to 2k1, the quantity squared, plus 2k2, the quantity squared. So we know that that's going to be equal to 4k1 squared plus 4k2 squared. And we can factor out a 2 here, right? So we have 2 times 2k1 squared plus 2k2 squared. And we know that the set of integers is closed under multiplication and addition. So that means this expression right here, uh, we can define to be just equal to k3, where k3 is an arbitrary integer. So if that is the case, then we're going to have that that is equal to uh, 2k3, which obviously is an s. So what does that mean? So therefore, this set S is closed under star. 
So now we need to see, okay, well this is a magma, so therefore uh, x is a magma. Now we need to test and see if this operation star is an associative operator uh, on S. Okay, so, so let's give that a go and see if that works. Okay, so we need to see if x star y star z is equal to x star parentheses y star z close parentheses. So that's going to be equal to what? So that's going to be equal to 4k1 squared plus 4k2 squared. So we already know that that's x star y, and we can define z to be another integer, even integer, such uh, like 2k3 or something like that. So this is going to be equal to uh, this expression. So keep in mind that all these are real numbers, and we know that the set of real numbers is an associative set as well. That's one of the axioms of the real numbers. So this is going to be equal to 4k1 squared plus 4k2 squared plus 4k3 squared. So how can we say this? And this is due to associativity of the set of real numbers. So this expression is precisely equal to x star y star z, right? So we have shown that the set S is uh, associative. So that means star is associative on S. That means X is an associative magma, and therefore X is a semigroup. So that would be the complete proof of a semigroup. Um, so that's just a brief overview of what a magma is and what a semigroup is. Let S be the set containing the elements 1, negative 1, I, negative I, where I is the square root of negative 1. And let star be the ordinary multiplication operation. Is S star a magma and moreover a semigroup? Justify your answer. As always, if you enjoyed, please like this video, consider leaving a comment, and if you enjoy the channel content, please subscribe. We publish several new topics every single week. Thank you.